Hey guys, so this video will be an introduction to functions and we will be using the read CSV function which comes from the pandas library as an example. So what is a function? A function is a block of code that carries out a task. So functions themselves contain procedures or instructions on how to perform a task. So we could compare a function to a cake factory. So a cake factory would have workers and the workers would know how to create a cake. So if we want the cake factory to create chocolate cakes, then we would provide the factory with ingredients to make chocolate cake. So for example, we need to provide it chocolates. However, if we want the factory or the function to create a strawberry cake, then we'd have to provide the factory with strawberries rather than chocolates. So from a function syntax, we can pass these instructions by changing the inputs to the function. We provide instructions to the function on how to perform the task by assigning attributes to the function's parameters. Later, we'll go through an example to make this more clear. Functions are also known as methods and procedures. Methods are functions specific to an object's type. If, for example, we are working with an object that is a list, then there are specific functions or methods that are available to that object because the object itself is a list. So for example, uh, we have methods to arrange elements in the list. However, because this method is only specific to that object, then we cannot use that method for a different type of object. So for example, then we might not be able to use a specific method for that different type of object. So since this is a beginner's course, I really don't want to go into too much detail on trying to figure out if a function is a method or not. However, I would just like you to be familiar that if you encounter the term method or procedures when you're trying to learn programming in Python, then you can simply think that a method or a procedure is nothing more than just another function. So functions can be built in or can be user defined. So our example here, the read CSV function, is a built-in function, meaning we don't have to write the instructions on how the function would run because it is inbuilt. User-defined functions, on the other hand, are functions that we would have to write the code within the function so that the function would know what to do. For this tutorial, we'll just be focusing on an inbuilt function, which is the read CSV function. So let's see how we would write this read CSV function. First, we need to run the import pandas as pd. So what we're doing here is we are importing the pandas library and we are assigning the variable pd to stand for the library pandas. So if we would like to run the read CSV function, we need to first type the PD, which stands for the pandas library. And then we would type read CSV and we would pass the file name that we would like to import. So here I would have a file name called book1.csv. And as you could see here, this is the CSV file that I would like to import and it is stored in my user folder called JM. So because the default folder of my Jupyter Notebook is this JM folder, that is the reason why I can reference the file that I would like to import simply by stating its file name surrounded by a single quote. Otherwise, if this file is located in another folder, we'll have to reference the full path of the folder where the file is saved. So let us try to run this code and let's see what happens. All right, so now we could see the output of our function, which is a data frame. 
So to understand what we have come up here, let us look at the raw file. I have opened using Excel the CSV file that we wanted to import. So it's quite a simple file. We have two columns and four rows. The first row being zero and one, we could think of this as the column headers. And we have the values, which is letters A, B, and C, and E, F, and G spread across two columns. And this is what we exactly got when we ran the function, except of course that the function has added this index. I have a separate video for the index, but for now, just be familiar that the reason why we have this extra column, so the reason why it's there, it's because it is necessary for us to be able to use series and data frames in pandas. So notice also that we have the first row of our source data. So zero and one is the first row of our source CSV file, and they have been used as column labels for our resulting data frame. Earlier, we have touched upon arguments and parameters. So now that we have ran our first function, let's go into more details. So what are arguments and what are parameters? So when we pass an instruction to the read CSV file to import the book1.csv, this string here, so it's a string because um, we have surrounded it with a single quote. So this string is what we call an argument. So you could think of an argument as an input to the function so that the function would take this input and process it and give you the necessary output. Now, what is a parameter? So to show you the distinction between parameters and arguments, let us put the cursor here inside the parentheses of the function and let's press the shift tab key in our keyboard. Let us maximize this pop-up window by pressing plus and this pop-up would show us the list of parameters that the function can take. So let's break this line by line. So this, as you notice, is the read CSV function that we have just used. And after the open parentheses here, we would have a list of parameters. So these texts in black, which usually appear before a semicolon or before this equal sign, these ones are the parameters. And on the other hand, these, these blocks of text that appear after the semicolon or after the equal sign, these are arguments. So for this video, let's just focus on the first parameter here, file path or buffer. So you might be wondering how did our function work when the file path or buffer parameter was not used as an input in the function. What you could see here is the file path and buffer uses a semicolon and not an equal sign. So that is an indication that it is optional to mention the parameter when running the function. So for example, if I copy the parameter name file path or buffer and paste this as part of the function and equate the file path or buffer parameter to our argument, which is book1.csv, and run this using shift enter, you will see that we will get the same result. So what we're saying is that we don't necessarily have to indicate the parameter that we are using because this first parameter is a default parameter. And so we can simply pass the argument without having to state that we are passing this argument to a specific parameter. So let's open again our parameter list by pressing shift tab. And you could see that this parameter comes in first among all the other parameters. So that when we pass an argument by itself, the function will automatically assign the first argument that it encounters to the first parameter that the function takes. So in that sense, the function 
we'll always know that the first argument that we are passing for the function would always be used for the first parameter in the function. So just bear this in mind, especially when you're passing multiple arguments into a function, because if you're not specifying the parameter to which you are passing certain arguments to, you might end up with a different result for your function. So another way to find out what parameters the function takes is by referring to the pandas documentation online. So let's just search for it using Google. So we could type pandas and the function name. So let's just search for the link that takes us to the pandas.pydata.org site. So we click on this one. And you can see here, it's similar to the pop-up window that we have seen in Jupyter Notebooks. However, I see that this online documentation is most of the times more updated than the one in Jupyter Notebooks. So the details are quite similar. We start again with the file path or buffer parameter, and we have a full list of the other parameters that the function can take. So this block of text right here shows us the full list of parameters that the function takes. And each parameter is separated by a comma. And you could see that some parameters, like these ones, they are indicated with an equal sign. So when we see that a parameter is followed by an equal sign and then an object name, for example, here, or none, for example, here, then we know that when we want to pass an argument, to that parameter, then we have to specifically mention which argument we are passing to that parameter. So in other words, these parameters that don't have any equal sign after them are the default parameters wherein any argument that we pass on to the function doesn't need to have any parameter associated with it. We can just simply pass the object and the function will know that this argument is being passed to that parameter. So these other parameters, we could call them as optional parameters, meaning that we don't necessarily have to use them or to give an instruction on how to use that parameter. However, this parameter is a required parameter, so we cannot skip it. Otherwise, the function will not run. So for example, this parameter takes in the CSV file name of the file that we want to import. So if we don't specify a file name, the function itself will not run. So once we have provided the file name, then the rest of the other parameters are optional. So if, for example, we want to use this specific parameter, skip blank lines, which intuitively means that we want to instruct the function to skip blank lines. To use this parameter, we'll have to indicate this explicitly as part of our function. All right, for the purpose of this video, let's just simplify our example and focus on using just one parameter, which is file path or buffer. So as you notice here, I've only indicated the file name or without having to indicate the full directory on where the file is saved. The reason for this is because the file name that we are importing is stored in the same root directory as our Jupyter Notebooks. So how do we find out what is the root directory of our Jupyter Notebook? So to do that, first we'll need to import the OS library. And we can type OS then dot get cwd and then open and close parentheses and run this using shift enter so this file path is a default file path for our jupyter notebook and we could verify that by comparing um, in our finder and you could see here mac hd users and then jm and this is our file so we can show that when we modify our function and include the full file path here, we will get the same result. And I would run that by just pressing shift enter again. So as you could see, when we add the full file path, we will get the same result. 
So therefore, if you want to import a file that is saved in a different folder, then just add another folder name here and separate it with a forward slash from the file name. All right, so let me just remove that since our file is still within the same path. All right, so the final topic that I wanted to discuss in this video is a brief introduction on method chaining. So method chaining is when we call multiple functions one right after the other. So for example, let's use our most recent function here. And what we are seeing here is a default view of the output, but we can use the head function and pass it the argument one to indicate that I would only want to see the first row of the output data frame. If I run this using shift enter, now we could see that the output only has one row. And as you could see with one line of code, we are able to combine two functions the first, of course, being the read CSV function, and then separate it with a dot with the next function, which is the head. So the head function simply shows us a portion of the data frame. And in this example, we have asked it to show us only one row of the data frame. And that's exactly what we got. So when we discuss other functions throughout our tutorials, you will see that we are not restricted to simply chaining two functions. We can chain multiple functions as we want. However, just bear in mind that method chaining is good if you would like to reduce the number of lines of code that you want to write. However, because we are combining several functions into one line of code, it might be more difficult for us to track the changes that happens in between each function. So for example, if we encounter an error in a method chain code, we probably have to break up the code to find out which function caused the error. So in that sense, method chaining might not be the best way to write a line of code. All right, so that is it for our introduction to functions using the read CSV function as an example. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And watch out for my next videos where we would continue to discuss how to use the pandas library to learn how to code in Python. I'll see you then.